I believe a lot of people out there have been hearing of, oh, she had the surgery, they removed her fallopian tube. She had a surgery, they removed one of her tube, they removed one of her two or the both tubes. So we're hearing things like that. And somebody messaged me, is there hope for people that have their fallopian tube removed? Is there hope for people that have their fallopian tube removed? What are their chances of giving birth? Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for all my viewers. Today, I'm going to be talking about the removal of the fallopian tube, the scientific, scientific name for the removal of the fallopian tube, the types of removal of fallopian tube, and also what's next after the fallopian tube has been removed, and also what causes the fallopian tube to be removed. But before we go into details into this class, if you are new on our YouTube channel, please click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Please just like, please help us like so that the visibility will increase more. Thank you. Welcome back. Like I earlier said, today I'm going to be talking about the removal of the fallopian tube, why a lady's fallopian tube will be removed, and also what's next after the fallopian tube has been removed. The first thing I want you to know is that fallopian tube removal is also known as sapinjectomy. Sapinjectomy. Sapinjectomy is the removal of the fallopian tube. There are two types of sapinjectomy. We have the unilateral sapinjectomy and the bilateral sapinjectomy. The unilateral sapinjectomy and the bilateral sapinjectomy. In terms of the unilateral sapinjectomy, it simply means one of the fallopian tube is out. One of the fallopian tube is out. It's one of the fallopian tube that the surgeons removed. But bilateral simply means that the two fallopian tube has been removed. The two fallopian tube has what has been removed. So it's better for you to know the difference between unilateral and bilateral. Bi is two. And we all know as ladies, as women, we normally have two fallopian tubes. So when one of the fallopian tube is removed, it is known as unilateral sapinjectomy. But when both tubes are removed, it is known as what? Bilateral sapinjectomy. So you may want to ask, why will ladies fallopian tube be removed? What can cause that? So the first thing I have to share with you is ectopic pregnancy, ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Remember in my last video, I talked about ectopic pregnancy and the causes. So when one is having ruptured ectopic pregnancy, the surgeons might have no choice than to remove the fallopian tube. So one of the major causes or one of the causes in general of sapinjectomy is what? Is what? Ectopic pregnancy. Then the second is cancer. Cancer of the uterus, cancer of the ovaries, cancer of the fallopian tube can lead to the removal of the fallopian tube. You know, cancer is very, very dangerous. And if not treated on time, it can spread. So to avoid the spread, after examination, they might decide to remove that fallopian tube. So if someone has history of cancer of the fallopian tube, or sorry, someone has done that, that has cancer generally of these reproductive organs, there's a possibility that it can lead to the removal of the fallopian tube. Then the third one is blocked or damaged tube when your tube when the tube is blocked when the tube is damaged can lead to the removal because a damaged tube a blocked tube has no function so they might say well the chances of survival you have to remove it to be better to be okay it's better off this way you might remove it so when there is blocked or damaged fallopian tube it can lead to the removal then the other is endometriosis of the fallopian tube. Endometriosis of the fallopian tube. For those that don't know what endometriosis is, 
endometriosis is when things that are supposed to be in the uterus start developing outside the uterus products of the uterus product of the womb start developing um, outside the uterus so when there's an endometriosis of the fallopian tube it can lead to what removal of the fallopian tube then that's that's for the causes why um the fallopian tube has to be removed then the major question we are about to tackle is what happened when the fallopian tube is removed what are the chances of getting pregnant so if someone has the unilateral sapigectomy that's the unilateral removal of the fallopian tube where just one fallopian tube is removed the person can still give birth naturally yes the person can still give birth naturally if it's just one fallopian tube that is affected, one fallopian tube that is removed, the other fallopian tube is, is still healthy, is not blocked, is not damaged, this individual can still give birth. But if it's a situation where both fallopian tubes are gone, natural method of giving birth might not, is not possible. You have to start thinking of in vitro fertilization in vitro what in vitro fertilization when both tubes are removed that is what bilateral um bilateral sapinjectomy but if it is one the person can still give birth but if both tubes are removed the person cannot give birth naturally so we start thinking of in vitro fertilization ivf as a method of conception I hope this video gives you an insight of what causes it and also if the chances of giving birth or not. Yeah, if there are chances of giving birth or not. So that is that about removal of the fallopian tube. Thank you very much for watching my video once again. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Um, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to share with a friend if you got value. For all my returning subscribers, Thank you very much. For those that don't know what a fallopian tube is, this is the fallopian tube. You can see it on the screen. Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead. Bye and see you in our next video.